Spitfire Chamber Strings is probably one of the better libraries that Spitfire Audio has created. But it's a little bit on the pricey side, especially if you get the Pro version, then it costs almost as much as the BBC Pro Orchestra. So Spitfire made an Essentials version, so us mere mortals also can play with these samples. But is this stripped down version worth it? Let's take a deeper look. Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. Now, this is in fact a sponsored video by Spitfire Audio, and I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Now, they don't want me to change anything. They want me to do the same as I always do. In fact, they're just supporting me the way you could as well. Apart from hitting like and subscribe and writing nice comments to me, you can also become a patron or buy my course. More on that in the description below. Now, let's get on with the review. First thing we need to take care of is where does the Spitfire Chamber Strings Essentials derive from? Well, back in the day, Spitfire Audio created a bespoke library to a very selected few special people, I guess, that also paid a lot of money, and they called the library Sable Strings. Now, later Spitfire repackaged this library into Spitfire Chamber Strings, and they also created a pro version with even more mic positions. Now, this library is huge, has tons of articulations, and probably is one of the most deeply sampled string libraries out there. I even bought the Spitfire Chamber Strings myself, my own money, and when I received this free Essentials version, I thought it would be interesting to compare these two. In a chamber string orchestra, you normally have about two to four players per instrument. And in a symphony string orchestra, you can have up to 16 players per instrument. So I thought we should make a little bit of a comparison so you understand what the sound is all about. Let's listen first to a symphony string orchestra. Not thinking too much about the room and the reverb and EQ and all that, I hope you could hear that this is a very broad, smoother, big sound. Now, let's listen to a little bit smaller section, still quite large, that is often referred to as studio strings. Maybe you didn't hear that much difference between the two libraries in terms of bigness and smoothness, but it tends to be a little bit more detailed, not just thinking about mic positions and rooms and reverbs and all that. But let's go even smaller now, and let's go down to chamber string size. And also, just for reference, let's go down to the smallest size string orchestra, the solo strings, where you have only one player per instrument, and see what that sounds like. The last example I wanted to give you is DVC. But wait a minute, chamber strings doesn't have any DVC patches. No but it lends itself really well to that idea. Basically, in this case, doubling up the parts. You see, normally, when you take a big symphony orchestra and double those parts, it tend to be too big. It's twice the size as before. So I know there's a big discussion on the net if you really, the VC really matters and all that in the virtual world. And I think it can make a difference if you know what you're doing and what style you're working with. And I also find that the chamber strings, because they have few players, when you double them up, it sounds very natural. Let's listen to this example. So what are some good styles that you can use chamber strings for? Actually, you can use it for anything, but particularly some styles work really well. Let's listen to Baroque chamber music, for example.
Let's take a look at all the articulations that you get in the Essentials library. The legato is the same as in the core patch in Spitfire Chamber Strings. Obviously, that library also has more flexible legatos. But I still find that this one is very good and very easy to play. I really like the sustains in this library. I don't normally use them so much because I find they sound a little bit unnatural, but maybe because there are less players in each note, I just like it better here and I use them more frequently. The spiccato is also very flexible. The staccato is just a little bit longer than the spiccato. The pizzicato is very detailed and fun to play with. The harmonics sound very good, but because they are harmonics, the range is not that big, but it has a very nice effect. The tremolos are very nice and natural. They have two different attacks. It's quite subtle, but it does make a difference. If you hit it softer, you get sort of a dig into the string. And if you hit harder, then it's a faster attack. So here's softer. And harder. The trills also have subtle differences depending on how hard you hit the keys. If I do it softly, you get just a little bit longer first note. And if I hit it harder, it's direct. And I really like it. It's a very small detail, but it really gives you more control and not all the notes sound the same all the time. And then we have the major trills as well. All the instruments have the exact same articulation. So let's go on to the next instrument, violin two. Now, I'm not going to show all the articulations here, just a little bit of the sound and if there's any difference. So the second violin sounds quite different, and that is a good thing. But I also feel like the legato is not handled the same way. It's a little bit slower. You could look at it that way that you have more options, but I prefer it that they behave the same. Let's also take a look at the shorts. Now, if I take a spiccato here, but if you use the staccato, it's actually quite a different articulation. So if you remember, the violins one had a longer staccato, while this one is much shorter. It's a very good articulation, and I don't mind having it. You could say that in a way you get more different sounds, but in a way also would prefer it 
if the articulations behave the same. Let's move on to the violas. I really enjoy the sounds of the violas in this library. I think it's one of the better viola strings out there, actually. It's perfect for emotional, darker writing. Let's move on to the cellos. Again, a really beautiful sound. I really enjoy this one. And even though this is two cellos, and if you listen carefully, you can hear that, it almost works as one cello solo. I do want to say one thing, though. I find that the legato on the cello is a little bit on the slow side. You hear that when you play faster passages. Now, you can play quickly, it reacts to it, the notes are not lagging behind, but you hear a little bit more artifacts here. It's almost like the room disappears when you play quickly. Obviously, you can work with the speed control and that helps a little bit. So just take a note on that. In this library, it's really good to automate the speed control as well. Now let's take a look at the basses. And let's now go to almost one of my favorite things about this library. Even though I like all the instruments, I find that the ensemble patch is incredibly useful. In the harmonics, obviously the range is not the whole keyboard again because there are harmonics, but you get a little bit more, obviously, because there are more instruments involved. So you have a range from up to, you can get some quite cool sounds there.
And then again, the trills. Now let's compare the Spitfire Chamber Strings Essentials with Spitfire Chamber Strings. On the left side, we have Spitfire Chamber Strings Essentials. And on the right, we have Spitfire Chamber Strings Violins 1. As you noticed, there is absolutely no difference between the sounds here. Same samples, same legato, same dynamics. But there are a few differences that you might have noticed already. The first thing is that you might have noticed that I'm using contact play here and complete control. And that is because the Essentials version does not work in complete control, at least not as I'm making this review. But both of the libraries work excellently in contact, obviously. Also, there are differences between articulations. In the Spitfire Chamber Strings, we have a collenio here, and you do not have that in the Essentials version, but you do have harmonics instead. Now, you might wonder why they did this, but I think they just thought they want more all-round library, and maybe collenio is a little bit less common. But personally, I think it would be better if they included, for example, a sol testo instead. Also, there are differences between the mics. We have two mics in the Essentials version, and you have three in chambered strings. Obviously, if you buy the Pro version, you get even more mics than that. There are also differences between the ensemble patches. In the Essentials version, you get articulations that are pretty much the same as the other instruments, less legato, obviously. But in the Spitfire Chamber Strings, you get way more stuff. You know, for example, flautando, sulpon, soltasto, and more different kinds of shorts. More flavors, more variation. I also wanted to mention that in the Spitfire Chamber Strings, you get even more than that. You have extended core techniques. You also have decorative techniques. You also have legato decorative, and then you also have performance legato. So you do get quite a bit more there. So what's the verdict? What do I think about this library? Well, the problem here is that I'm quite spoiled by Spitfire Chamber Strings. I mean, I miss all the depth, all the shorts, all the legatos that I get there when I work with Essentials Library. So I have to put myself in the shoes of somebody who hasn't worked with that library, and they just need a little bit cheaper, good Chamber Strings Library. If this would have existed before, I might have bought that instead, actually, because of the price. And it is a very good chamber sound, and you still get the same samples from the original. It sounds really nicely. It has great dynamics control. It's very easy to use. It has nice vibrato control. And the latency is, like, nice. It's easy to play with. Some newer string libraries sometimes, the latency is really a problem. It's hard to perform with. And this doesn't tax the system. The patches are small. It loads up quickly. And it has nice consistency in general. Now, my problems with it is that there are some small inconsistencies that are not a deal breaker, but sometimes they annoy me. The shorts are different in the different patches. So violin one has a spiccato and staccato, and they're nice. And then you expect the violin two to behave the same, but no, they don't. They actually sound quite different there. You could say, okay, so then they have more variations. You can take it that way, but it's a little bit annoying if you really want to use violin one and two and get a different sound there. And also the legato in the viola, I find it's a little bit different than the other ones. So you just have to be prepared that they behave slightly differently. But in general, they actually work really well together. It's well mixed. The room is really nice, and I rarely put on a reverb. Sometimes, though, with the legato, when you play fast, because it doesn't have the scripting for fast legatos, it, it works. It, it actually works quite well, and in the bigger orchestra, you won't hear it. But on its own, you can hear small sort of room artifacts when you play really fast with that legato. But otherwise, the room sounds really nice as it is. So let's talk about what all alternatives, and one of the reasons why I think this is probably still the better library out there for the price and what it sounds like. Well, because we have Vista by Performance Samples. Now, that's a very good library, but it's a very much 
bigger sound, and it's only legato, a great legato, but it's just that. You don't get anything else. Then we have Dolce by Audio Imperia. It's probably the best contender, but I think it's almost twice the price, and it is a bigger section, still within the chamber area, but it has a bigger, more romantic sound, maybe not as detailed. It's a good library, though. And then we have Anthology by 8 Dio, and that is not a chamber string orchestra, but it has a little bit smaller intimate sound, and it also has a chamber patch in there. It is not as detailed as this library, but if you have that library, you might want to think about that before you buy another library. Then we have the Chamber Strings by Light and Sound Samples, which I actually have less experience with, but I've listened to quite a few demos, and I know that doesn't really count to give you a good idea here, but I think it doesn't sound as good as the Spitfire Chamber Strings. But go and check it out and see what you think. There's also Tableau Chamber Strings by Orchestra Tools. It's a fairly good library and it's a little bit cheaper, but I don't think it has the same quality and flexibility as the Chamber Strings. So that is it for this review. I hope you found it helpful. And hopefully now you know if this Spitfire Chamber Strings Essentials is for you or not, or maybe if you want to get the Spitfire Chamber Strings. I hope I was as subjective as I could. Please let me know by hitting the like button. You can subscribe, you can write a comment, maybe letting me know if there are other Chamber Strings library I'm not aware of as of yet. But you can also support me by becoming a patron for as little as $1. And those who pay a little bit more get access to my MIDI files. You can also donate me money or you can buy my course, which is an even greater way of supporting me and you get some help back. So that's it for this time. Thank you very much for sticking through and watching this review. Until next time, take lots of care.